afternoon to one and all present so before we start uh, let me int introduce our speaker for today talk so he is dr hasim completed his b in aeronautical engineering from aeronautical society of india and me from anna university in aeronautical engineering his specialization was in both the degree uh, was propulsion then he admitted to iit kharagpur for his phd course and he has completed his phd in propulsion and combustion again his areas of research are on solid rocket motor hybrid propellant and inducted rocket he has also experience on micro gas turbine engine pulse jet engine and a small satellite he said he has published more than 20 research articles in national and international journals and conferences he has also worked as an associate professor in department of aerospace engineering at sandeep university nasik dr hasim i welcome you and i thank you for accepting our invitation for this talk thank you and now now you can start the webinar good afternoon to all connected in this web presentation uh, myself dr hashim i will give you the brief idea of small scale solid propellant processing and testing actually there are many types of solid propellants for example single double and triple based solid propellants composite solid propellants and composite double base solid propellants in this presentation i will brief the processing of composite solid propellant followed by one of its important testing procedure so now we come to the slide <clears throat> so here this is the these are the ingredients of the composite solid propellant and uh, the first is the fuel oxidizer binder plasticizer and curing agent so these are the important ingredients other than these ingredients there are some other ingredients also so we will not discuss on those uh, advanced ingredients these are the basic ingredients for the formulation of composite solid propellants so here we can see uh, some pictures so this is the aluminum powder and this is the fuel so here in the solid propellant we will use aluminum powder and the, this powder the grain size that means the particle size of the aluminum powder is roughly around some 500 to 600 nanometer or it may be more than that some in uh, for 200 or 100 micrometer also and this is the oxidizer so in this today presentation i am using ammonium perchlorate so actually here also ammonium perchlorate are there there are different size of the ammonium perchlorate so here it is roughly around uh, some 200 uh, micrometer size of the particle and this is the binder we are using binder because we have to bind some solid ingredients so this 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 binder is actually stpv it is a polymer and it is a hydrocarbon also so initially it is in liquid form but after the processing it will convert it into the solid form and for converting into it into solid form we have to use some curing agent so this is the curing agent ipdi isoform diisocyanate and the last one is doa this is dioctyl adipate so this function is to produce some elastic effect to the solid propellant otherwise the solid propellant will break or may may cracks will also come so for preventing the cracks and some breaking types of thing we have to use dioctyl adipate it is a plasticizer now we come to the right side of the slide so here five different types of uh, 
compositions of uh, composite solid propanes are given here. So the first type is I have used 68% ammonium perchlorate. That means oxidizer is 68% and fuel that is aluminium powder is 18% and the binder that is called STPB hydroxy terminated polybutadiene. So this is 14%. But this 14% is not representing the complete weight of the STPB. This combination you can see here in the bottom. So 1% is the IPDI, that means curing agent, and 2.3% is dioctyl adipate plasticizer, and the remaining, that means remaining of the 14%, so remaining is 10.7% is the STP, this is the binder. So this 14% is common in all the uh, compositions. Here we are changing the percentage of the oxidizer and fuel. So if you come to the serial number two, the composition, this, this composition, so ammonium perchlorate is now reduced to 66% and aluminium powder is increased to 20%. In the third type, ammonium perchlorate is 61% and aluminium powder is 25%. Similarly, it is 56% and aluminium powder is 30%. The fifth case is slightly different because it is it shows here that one is to one AP. So one is to one AP means 50% coarse ammonium perchlorate and 50% fine ammonium perchlorate. That means coarse if we take we, if we are taking in micron size like uh, 200 or 300 micrometer size of uh, the ammonium perchlorate. So maybe uh, that for fine maybe 200 to 300 or maybe 500 nanometer size of the ammonia perchlorate so this is for improving the performance of the solid propane okay and here in the fifth case the aluminium powder is zero percent we can take some percentage of aluminium powder also but here we we intentionally put zero percent why because i want to say that this STPB is a hydrocarbon and it is a polymer also. So this STPB for the combination five will work as a fuel as well as binder. So here the fuel is STPB because aluminum powder is zero and, and oxidizer is ammonium perchlorate 50% coarse and 50% fine. Like, uh, for, uh, like that 43% of the coarse ammonium perchlorate and 43% of fine ammonium perchlorate. Now we come to the next slide. So this, in this slide, uh, it, is, it shows the some safety measures and the precautions. And uh, as I mentioned that we are using uh, many ingredients. So for protecting the ingredients to reduce the effect of atmospheric condition to the particle to the aluminum particle or to the ammonium perchlorate particles or other ingredients, we have to use desiccator. Okay, so desiccator is actually a some chamber type of thing. So when you want to uh, put your ingredient inside and you can keep it inside and then you can you have to use some vacuum pump and then you can reduce the air of the chamber. So your ingredients will be in the vacuum condition so there will be no connection with the atmosphere to that to those ingredients so this is the first precaution for the ingredients and now the second precautions are for your for the person who is working with the solid propane so during the processing or during the testing you must use good quality industrial mask because all these ingredients are actually actually uh, cancer prone ingredients so if 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 somebody will inhale the fumes of these ingredients so maybe not today after some time after five years or after 10 years the person may get uh, some uh, some cancer effect some maybe some uh, some types of uh, some some type of major problems health issues 
may come so for that you must use you have to use that uh, uh, good quality mask and followed by you must use hand gloves also because these ingredients sometimes uh, uh, react with your skin and it will uh, damage your skin so uh, gloves and masks are very important for the for, for the person who is working with the those ingredients or working with the solid program so now we come to the mixing procedure and the precautions what are the precautions you have to take during the mixing so as you 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 first of all you take uh, one beaker and you weight the htpv according to the percentage so here in all the in the samples uh, i have taken that the total weight of the sample of 13 gram okay so according to the 13 gram according to the percentage of htpv doa ipdi ap and aluminium particles uh, we have to use the weight and we have, so here so here actually it is one is theoretical weight and another is the actual weight so theoretical weight is the calculated weight and the actual weight the weight uh, what you got after the weighing machine after using the weighing machine okay so 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 you due to the sensitivity of the weighing machine you will get some difference of uh, actual and the theoretical weight so it, you will start uh, with STPB, the weight of the STPB is this, and then DOA, and then IPDI. Okay. In some samples, um, mostly for the large scale production, there they use IPDI at the last. But here the ingredients is very small, so if we use IPDI, it is a very small quantity, so it is it will be very tough to mix in well and proper way. Uh, to the IPDI in the sample. So if we will first take the STPB of this uh, amount to the beaker and then DOA and then IPDI and then mix thoroughly. And after that, according to the weight, we will take AB, that means ammonium perchlorate and followed by aluminum powder. All these things will be in the beaker and then we will mix it roughly around 20 to 25 minutes and mix and after that <clears throat> your mixture will be ready for the further procedure so further the procedure the, the process uh, involved process is the mixing using micro mixture so before going to the micro mixture side i will just give you the simple idea of the of the uh, the sample five because here we have used the uh, AP fine and AP coarse. So similarly, STPV, DOA, IPDI. After that, we will use we will pour AP fine particle to the beaker and then AP coarse pipe particle to the beaker. So if you want, you can purchase directly uh, fine and coarse AP particle, or if you have this type of mortar and pestle with you then you can use this and you can use ap force and then you can convert it to ap fine okay but it is but but i will not recommend it because this will be like, like some blind type of, uh, of work because after crushing with this mortar and pestle you have no idea what is the size of the particle because the size has the great influence on the performance of the solid program. Okay, so this is the sample five. So here we can see the AP fine and AP force particle. Okay, now we come to the mix uh, mixing procedure. So this is the sigma blade type of uh, micro mixture. So after hand mixing, the mixture will be shifted to this uh, sigma blade type of mixer. And what is this sigma blade? Because the blade shape is like sigma. Okay, this is a, one thing is like this. And another thing is this, this blade is completely different from the mixer what we are using in the kitchen. Okay, Be because here the blade, the design is like that. So if 
something will stick with the blade suppose here something is sticking so when this blade will come here so this lobe will be here okay this lobe will be here and this will clean the blade okay so nothing will be stick with the blade and then with this type of uh, micro mixture we can improve the mixing process now we come to the uh, the degassing vacuum chamber procedure so what is the purpose of degassing so actually during the mixing some air will be will may trap to the propellant so we want to remove all those air air from the propellant and we want a solid completely solid form of the, the that that mixture okay so for that we are using here degassing chamber and this is the degassing chamber we we put it we put the the mixed propellant here and using this plunger we will press that and simultaneously what we will do we will use a uh, uh, vacuum pump and this is the this is the connection of the vacuum pump this is black color pipe and this is this is connected here and there are two another two 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 other pipes and this is for supplying the hot water to the this degassing chamber so in the in this degassing chamber there are two casing one is inner casing another is outer casing in between the gap we will supply the hot water and this hot water will be roughly around 50 to 60 degree c and the purpose of this hot water to increase the solidification process of the propane because you have already used ipdi in the mixture and ipdi function is to cure the propane okay so so for increase the the solidification process because the the propane is still under process processing okay so for that we have to use hot water and simultaneously vacuum pump is also working for this so whatever gas is trapped inside the solid propane that that will be uh, taken out from the propane and the propane will be completely in the solid form there will be no air pocket inside the propane so now we come to the the oven so this solid propane processing is we can say that uh, very similar to baking of uh, uh, cake or you can say that biscuits so here also after mixing and this uh, degassing process what shape you want accordingly you have to use the uh, the bottle so i have used here a cylindrical bottle and we have uh, i have shifted the uh, the processed that means after degassing uh, procedure we have shifted the propane inside the bottle and uh, transfer it to the vacuum oven then what is the function of oven here the oven will supply heat to the the propane okay the semi solid propane you can say that the semi solid propane and we will continue this process for 5 to 6 days okay at a standard temperature of roughly around 50 to 60 degrees c and this oven is not a simple oven it is a vacuum oven why we are using vacuum oven because we don't want to uh, give chance to the propellant to react with the atmospheric condition during the curing process okay so once we will uh, close this door and do some vacuum there will be no connection from the atmosphere and the temperature inside temperature will be 50 to 60 and we will leave as it is for five to six days so after the continuous five to six days heating we will take out the propane and at room temperature again we will leave for 10 to 15 days for the complete solidification okay so these are the the major procedure for 
the processing of the composite solid flow plate. So this is the propellant uh, which I have that uh, taken from the uh, the bottle, cut the bottle and taken the propellant. And this is a very sharp uh, surface because the bottle because the bottle internal surface was very uh, smooth. So due to that, the propellant surface is also very smooth. And if you if you bond this solid propellant, it will bond like a cracker. Okay, but if it is a, inside a uh, rocket motor, then you have seen many times that uh, space shuttle and rockets. So then the flame is in, in a different way. And here, if it, in open atmosphere, if you are burning, then the, it will burn like like the ejection of some particles. And these are actually ejection of the aluminium particles. So now after uh, this process, processing of the solid composite solid propane now i will give you the idea of the how to test the composite solid propane so there are there are n number of n numbers of uh, tests for the composite solid propane so when one one is very important uh, test that is called the testing of the regression rate so regression rate means uh, what uh, means what are the length born in each and every second okay so this is the this is called the regression rate for example so this this is a cigarette here so suppose from here to here the length of the cigarette the length is five centimeter and it takes five minute time for its complete birth okay so the burning rate will be one centimeter per minute. Okay, five centimeter length and five minute time. So you have one equation here, time is equal to distance by velocity because the velocity is meter per second and the regression rate unit is also mm per second or meter per second like that. So we can we can use this formula for finding the regression rate. So suppose the regression rate is R and then distance by time. Distance is five centimeter and time is five minute. Then you are getting R is equal to one centimeter per minute. So this is the idea to calculate the regression rate of the solid propane. So experimentally, how to calculate the regression rate of a composite solid propane? So that I will explain you through some slides. So this is called this left side. This is called the window bomb, and the function of window bomb is to provide the similar effect of the rocket motor to the burning propellant, because in the rocket motor the pro the internal pressure that means the gas pressure inside the rocket motor is very high and at that pressure the propellant burns okay so for testing the solid propellant or for testing or for finding the regression rate at that atmosphere you have to give the similar atmosphere during the testing so this is one chamber and this chamber will be filled with nitrogen gas. So you can fill with 40 bar, you can fill with 60 bar, 70 bar, whatever you want, you can fill based on your motor design, actual motor design. And this is called window bomb because two windows are here. So one is for light and another is for camera because uh, before testing, you have, you if you want, you can see that uh, the solid propane what you have installed inside the window bomb it is in it is in proper way or not so for that we are using here camera also and this is one for the light source and these are the connections here and this is right side this is called the time machine okay and this is this top right it is the regulator so here in the next slide this is, this is the connection of the window bomb so this is the solid propellant okay and the top 
connection is for the battery okay and this is for the ignition so here we are using a nichrome wire and when we will supply the current the nichrome wire will be red hot okay and it will transfer energy to the solid propane and solid propane will be ignited okay and after that the propane the burning surface will move downward so here one two and three three connections are here three wires are inserted into the solid propane and these wires are connected with the time machine so when the burning surface will come to this wire due to the heat the wire will cut okay and then it will send a signal to the time machine and after that when the burning surface will come to the wire number two it will again send one signal to the uh, time machine and the time machine will record the time from the first and the second wire okay similarly the third wire so you have three different time with you and you have the distance also from the first wire to second and second wire to the third wire so you have time and you have distance okay so if you want to find the regression rate regression rate you can use that formula r is equal to distance by time and then you can find the regression rate at different pressures of the window ball so here you can see uh, five different samples regression rate so the first regression rate at 40 bar pressure of the window bomb and the second is at 70 bar pressure of the window bomb so for each pressure level uh, i did two tests this is first setup and this is the second setup like that for getting the exact value exact regression rate so at 40 bar the first setup i got 6.1 and for the second setup 6.8 similarly 5 and then 5 5.7 5.5 5 .5, like that and for the fifth sample i i got 10.1 and for the second setup 10.9 so uh, if you see here so the fifth one gives the maximum regression rate and because here we have used two different size of ammonium perchlorate one is fine one is coarse so this fine particle help to the coarse part particle and followed by it improve the the burning process of the aluminium powder so that's why you can here you can see that the regression rate of fifth sample is higher than all other samples okay so similarly uh, i did test for the 70 bar also so 6.9 7.4 6.5 6.3 like that so regression rate uh, can in, can increase at higher pressure level okay so if you increase the pressure inside the combustion chamber or inside the rocket motor the regression rate will be increased okay or if you reduce the size of the particle either oxidizer particle size or fuel like aluminium particle size you can increase the regression rate and other performance parameters also okay so there we have seen very small scale uh, solid propane processing and testing uh, the idea we have seen and here i can show you uh, the large scale mixing process and these pictures i have taken from uh, uh, one drdo conference so this is the the big mixture here you can use uh, some uh, 400 500 uh, kg of uh, ingredients at a time and uh, here it, here you can see that the mixing of this and the blades are also here so here in the the bottom some sigma blade sigma type of a blade elements you can see so <coughs> similarly 
we are in the left side that this is the casting of the 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 semi solid propane okay and uh, here in the bottom this is a uh, oven big size oven for the large scale solid propane processing and the testing so in this presentation i gave you uh, the brief idea of the small scale processing of composite solid propane followed by the testing of the composite solid propane and not all the testing i gave you a single the one one testing idea that is called the testing of the propane for finding the regression rate <coughs> thank you okay thank you sir it was really a nice and in depth presentation thank you so i am waiting for some questions sir uh, i shall ask you if i get any any question from the student side we shall wait for another couple of minutes so i get one question from one student sir uh, yes he is asking that what is the role of fine and coarse ap uh, why can't we use only one mm -hmm. and what if we are we are adding like uh, what is the proportion that we can add the coarse into the fine or fine into the coarse mm -hmm. yeah actually the idea is to increase the surface area so if the surface area will be more so you can uh, you can burn uh, that particle easily okay and that particle can contribute its energy easily to the aluminum particles so here so if it is the particle size is small the surface area will be more okay so we know that the, as we reduce the uh, particle size the surface area is going to increase okay so th this is the main reason to increase the surface area and if we increase the surface area we, we can improve the burning property okay and what about the proportion so proportion here i uh, use the uh, one is to one you can you can change uh, based on uh, your experiment or based on your requirement you can use the uh, some other proportions also like 60 40 and like 30 70 like that so it depends upon uh, your requirement and the burning quality or the regression rate so based on the required regression rate because regression rate is very important uh, as you know that uh, many 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 uh, missiles uh, they mentioned that uh, uh, 2000 kilometer uh, at 3000 kilometer the range is like that so this range is actually uh, this regression rate is also the one uh, supporting parameters for finding the the range of the rocket so if you want higher regression rate so you have to you have to use the the proportion accordingly so before that you have to do some some small small test and after that then you can uh, uh, process the propane in large scale hope your doubt is clear yeah okay thank you sir mm. and one more question sir mm. Yes. Like, uh, what is the role of this aluminium? You have added aluminium into your in, into your sample. Yes. So, what is the role of it? So, aluminium is actually a fuel. So, there are there are many fuels. Uh, the many metal fuels are used in uh, rocket applications, means rocket propellants. So, like aluminium powder, beryllium powder, boron powder. So, generally, aluminium powder are used because it's it has uh, around 31 megajoule per kg heat of combustion 
okay so we can use boron particles also but boron has some uh, different uh, some other some problems so 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 that uh, uh, boron is if you want to use boron you can use uh, some percent of the total weight of the uh, aluminum aluminum or any other uh, fuel particles okay so basically aluminum is a fuel so it's basically to increase the energy density of overall overall fuel yes yes yeah okay i do not receive any other questions sir okay let me wait for another second some seconds if i get any i will ask it okay sir okay i think okay. i did not receive any any further question okay thank you so thank much you. sir thank you thank you for accepting our invitation once again i thank you thank you thank you sir